We are Mark and Sally Bernard of Bernard Organics in Freetown, PEI. And we are an organic grain farm, diversified with a bit of livestock and a feed mill. These hopper tanks that are over here are all to do with the feed mill. So there's six different ingredients. So they all feed in and we're able to take those grains in there in certain rations to be able to build the feed mix. The farm is 500 acres of cultivated land that we grow crops on in a eight year rotation. In that we would grow wheat to start with and we wouldn't grow wheat again for another eight years. So we grow wheat, uh, soybeans, barley, field peas, oats, clover, and green manure mixes, and then the hay crop too for the cattle as well. Yeah, there's a couple of pods of peas here. So we're in a barley and field pea field. We grow the barley and field peas together as an intercrop, a companion planting, and the relationship of the barley and the field peas together in the soil, will one will help the other grow. Also, peas tend to be a heavy crop to grow a lot of growth up top, and uh, later on in the season they'll fall over and then it's hard to harvest. So the barley acts as kind of a trellis or a support system for it to hold it up so we can combine it and harvest it uh, even that much more easier. <laughs> hey buddy. I'm a direct marketer. Like I like people, I like talking to people and dealing with people and I get a real charge out of handing the product directly to the person who's gonna consume it. So I have built like a little community of folks who want to buy meat, chicken, eggs. But then our feed customers are a bit more diverse. I think most of our feed customers actually, I don't know if they care so much about organics or they would just like to have a transparent and preferably local feed source. How's that taste? Great. This is our chicken pasture, so this is where we raise both our layers and our meat birds. We are just moving their pasture shelter, so we move it about twice a week, again depending on how the grass is growing and how they're doing. These are a tiny part of our farm and a tiny part of our business, but they're really good for the soil. They're sort of ripping up all the dead grass and all the thatch at the bottom. Um, they eat mosquitoes and earwigs and all those good things. Um, so they have an impact that way. And then obviously their manure is feeding the soil. And it's kind of cool from a feed perspective we use our feed and so we can see like, oh, the eggs are looking a little small. Maybe we better check the protein on the soybeans or all of those things. So it's kind of nice that these are sort of our lab for our feed mill to kind of be a ground zero of, well, we put this new ingredient in, how's it working out? So yeah, that, it, that is really cool to have that um, on site as well. This, these nest boxes are actually pretty cool because you the chicken goes in the inside and lays its egg in here. And since the nest box is on a slant, the eggs roll down here. So the chicken can't get to the eggs to sit on them. So this is a control room for the feed mill. In this room, we would get a recipe sheet with the, the recipe we're gonna make that day. And then we have controls of all the augers coming into the feed mill. So we're able to select which grain that we wanna put into the feed mill, and then it'll grind it according to the, the recipe. And then we're able to let it mix and then empty out the, the feed mill into the, the bagger so we can bag off the, the grain. So 
yeah, the packaging is actually a potato bag. So a company here on the island does make these bags and print these bags for us. So some of the history of the firm is that we did produce potatoes a number of years ago. It's a differentiation of the poly woven plastic bags for the feed industry. And um, yeah, it's just, it, it gives it a, a, a nice a nice feel to, to sell a, a feed in a paper bag that can be used in a number of different ways. We've spent some time this past winter learning more about soil biology and so we're really excited about making better compost to feed that soil life. So less about fertility and specific nutrients and more about fostering the biology that helps everything else grow and makes all the nutrients that are there available. Fertility is a big limiting factor for a lot of organic farms and we've thought of it too long in a box of we need this nutrient rather than how do we feed the soil so that it makes those nutrients available to the crops. But basically we've added sort of two years of cattle and then working a bit more with more winter cereals. So a little bit more cover in between, get some more no-till in there and it should be well fertilized because the cattle were in here last summer as well being rotationally grazed so it's got lots of fertility. Tumble wheels are like this innovative fencing product and you walk along with them and they sort of walk along with you. So it makes moving livestock super quick, super easy. We're just one of however many farmers that are really diving into the soil science right now and the science behind all that soil life and feeding it. And I think that's our key. We know that's the key for carbon sequestration. I'm always on about if climate change was a train, if we stopped all the fossil fuel use, the train would come to a stop. But agriculture is the only industry where you can actually drag that train backwards because we can sequester that carbon. So that's where I'm really hopeful. If we can start really, really actually putting those sorts of investments into where we can make a difference with agriculture, I really think we could really affect climate change. I grew up working with animals and uh, livestock are really uh, just a source of joy. I mean, obviously the baby animals are sort of the best part. Some people go to the ocean and I just like to come back here <laughs> to my cows. And when did, uh, did you decide that you were going to be the egg collector for the uh, French family? When um, my sister quit. <laughs> do you enjoy doing Yes, I do very much. We have four children that are of fairly young age right now so anything can happen with them but uh, in any good farmer's perspective is that we're setting this farm up the best for the next generation or the next successor or whoever it will be because we are stewards of the land that we want to put the land better than it was when we got it. <laughs>